Milka Samoye Cheput. I'm the wife of the late Member of Parliament, a former Member of Parliament of Ainakwe constituency. I was married in 1998, and I'm blessed with, we are blessed with two children, uh, Christian Kipkoech and Nicholas Kibiwot. As I speak here to actually say about my complaints, and first I, I want to say that our marriage has we have been happy uh, in our marriage to an extent. But to an extent also we've not been happy. Because at some point, uh, that is 2010, I started seeing a lot of problems. My husband would stop coming home uh, or go for a month without coming home. Then I realized he had an affair and he had, uh, had other children out of wedlock. So uh, we try to sort out our issues through our commu the elders, the parents, and the church. But all that has not um, worked out well for us. So my problem has been uh, that I'm not recognized by the family. And I've experienced a lot of fighting from my, my husband's siblings, uh, especially Daniel Kip Kiprotich. Uh, Monica Chep Chep Chepkorir and um, James Kipto. My challenge is, when we got married, we never had anything. But we started building ourselves from the scratch, acquiring one property after another one. And when this, when he started, when we started having marital problems, I was not allowed to access what we own with my husband. Every time I go to Eldoret, our marital home, they will call the police and they lock me in. And that has been the story all through my life. So we have other property like the Hotel Marriott, which we own together with my husband. And every time I go there, they call the police from Langas, they lock me up, and then they release me after some days. So that has been a very big challenge because uh, it's hard to live such a life when you have children and you need to, pro to provide for your children. Uh, the, the major problem that Mwishmua has, ha has been sick for so long, like since I got my son, and he had a renal failure, uh, which we have been working on it, taking medication, but we had a, he was given a transplant. He was done a transplant, and the sister gave another kidney. So after that, his life became better, uh, just medication. And um, as time goes, the, the, I don't know whether the kidneys started having issues. Moshmua has been having a lot of health issues as time goes. And towards 20, when he became a politician, it became more worse because he could forget his medicine, he could forget it, taking his medicine and uh, not having enough rest and also diet because he never had time to eat a uh, good meal at home. So he would eat outside, which is not good enough for a diabetic person. So. Um, in 2020, uh, Moshimua started having uh, problems with his knees. Uh, and at that time, when he was a, a member of parliament for Ainapkoi, uh, his, his siblings decided that I was not a good, a, wife, a, a good wife enough. So they brought a lady to my house when I was running the business in Eldoret. They, they brought this lady called Sheila Koech, but they didn't say it was the wife. They said it was a house girl. So they got rid of the house girl I had and brought another lady. And that lady really mistreated my kids for some time. And eventually, when I knew it was, it was not a house girl, I let her, I, I just released her, I just told her to go away. When he went away, he went with a lot of things, a TV, a cutlery, and all that. Um, and then the affair didn't end there. Uh, one time, uh, the, the affair continued, and Moeshimiwa decided to go and live with this lady. So that was 2001. So 2001, uh, this lady, because he was with him, he took him to hospital for a surgery. Personally, I would not have recommended that kind of surgery because I know his illness. A transplantee is a very delicate person. So he was done a surgery. And I don't think the surgery went on well. Because from then, 
Oshimo has been collapsing. He collapses during campaign. And on 8th, actually during campaign, Moshimo used to go to the hospital in the morning for an injection and in the evening. So on 8th, Moshimo falls sick in the house. He was taken by the driver to the hospital but died on arrival. So my complaint here is that we are preparing for the burial, which is on 18th. And um, I'm excluded from the burial arrangements. So the committee are meeting away from my house. I have a house in Westlands. But the committee decided to have meetings elsewhere, at Sanjay's place. So I, I feel like I'm the one who is supposed to be mourning with my children. And I feel the people who are Moshimiwa's friends should come to my house and mourn with me. But now they are going to Sanjay's house to mourn. So I don't know what they are mourning there when me and my children are in Westlands. Another thing I feel, uh, I, I, I'm intimidated. When I ask questions, where are Moshimiwa uh, staff? Who has Moshimiwa's cars? Because Moshimiwa's cars are not with me right now. Who is driving the car? The brothers just, they intimidate me, they threaten me. And the other day I was in the residence where Moshimiwa used to stay, and they just called the police. That was on Friday. They called the police and they took me to Parklands Police Station. Uh, and I was told to, that I, I, I'm a nuisance. And, but they released me anyway after staying there for four hours. So Moshimua's brother is the one who came to report the case and he said that Moshimua has other wives, who I don't know those wives, and he said that um, the other women uh, are supposed to be considered alongside me. So I'm just wondering, I mean, where is my, I mean, as a wife, where, where do I stand? Because if this other, if the family is supporting other women, what about me? Who takes care of me? Who looks after my own interest after my husband has, gone, has, has been buried? This burial we are organizing. Um, I don't know what my kids are going to inherit because if everybody, if the siblings are on everything that Moshimiwa owns, what are my children going back to school? Are my children education secured? Is my safety secured? Uh, when we were in the church, all our laptops, somebody came and collect laptops in my house, things were stolen when we were in the requiemas. So I don't know how safe am I in that house? How safe, is, how safe are my children in that house? Is it that we are going to bury Moishimi and, and our, our safety is not secured? Or what, what other plans do these people have? So I want the state to help me also, to protect me, to protect my children, to protect my interest as a widow. Because I don't think I'm safe with my, my, bro, my, my husband's brothers and sisters. That from 2020, things started going downhill. That is when his family introduced the woman called Sheila. This woman stole my laptop during the pandemic, and as a result, I was unable to do my exams. The family has also organized multiple meetings discouraging my dad from paying my school fees. This resulted in me skipping a whole year of school. I cry out to the president, and I cry out to people and the state to ask for help. That this family has intimidated us. Yesterday, we, we, had, we had gone to the place, Sanjay's place, and upon arrival, we discover that these people are calling the police on us, yet we are struggling to mourn. This is already hard enough. It's hard enough losing our father, but with the family fighting against us, we don't know what to do, so we ask for help. Thank you. We have before us, upon the death of Honorable Chepkut, some people being the part of the extended families are invading, interfering, and uh, in a manner to disfranchise 
the wife who was married in 1998. There was a monogamous marriage, being a Christian marriage. The family has, our clients has instructed us, introduce other persons as the wife to the late. Consequently, there has been plans on burial and to accord Mweshmiwa a decent uh, burial send-off. Unfortunately, the wife, the bona fide wife and her children are being segregated, are being secluded from participating in the burial arrangements. This is unconstitutional. This is a glaring uh, infringement on their rights to mourn the death of their father. So we, we have sought legal recourse on the right way to deal with such incidences. We are asking people of goodwill who are out to support Mweshmua to ensure that they do not send their support to scrupulous individuals who will end up using it for their own benefit. The wife, legitimate wife, the bona fide wife is there, the children are there. We are calling out upon people of goodwill to consider the position and the grief that the family, being the wife and children, are going through so that the perpetration, illegal perpetration by individuals who are claiming in the name of the deceased to solicit funds from the public, to bulldoze and to guide the process of the burial arrangements, that action be taken upon them so that even as the family mourns, their mourning shall not be doubled or tripled by the acts or omission being perpetrated by these individuals who are calling themselves uh, relatives. Yes, they are. We are not disputing that. What we are calling out for is let also the children, the bona fide wife, be also be allowed to, to participate in the burial uh, arrangement so that herself and the family, her two, two children, will also have uh, a, 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 I mean, a decent son of for their beloved father. That's our call out. We sought and we have sought legal redress because justice ought to be done and ought to be seen to be done to all individuals, regardless of their position, regardless of their capacities, regardless of their societal standing. Thank you. In terms Swahili, then English. So that's fair so that you can cover both. Yaliyo jiri ni kwamba aliyekuwa mbunge wa sehemu ya Inapkoi aliaga dunia. Na baada ya kifo cha mheshimiwa shida zimetokea hivi kwamba wale ndugu zake na majirani zake wameweza kuwatenga familia mama ya watoto ambaye ni bibi ambaye ameolewa kwa njia ya kiserikali na shahada ya ndoa ipo watoto ambaye mnawaona pale wale wameondolewa katika taratibu na mipango ya kuzika mheshimiwa ambaye ni mume wa mjane huyu na baba wa watoto hao yale yaliyotendeka ni kwamba hawa ndugu zake za marehemu wametumia polisi kuangamisha hawa clans wangu wamekamatwa kila wakati hivi kwamba hata wakati wa jana walikuwa wamekamatwa na kuchukuliwa kwenye kituo cha polisi cha Parklands wakazuiliwa wakawekwa jela wakilazimishwa kwamba wawachane na kushiriki katika mazishi ya babake na mazishi ya mume wake wamekuja leo siku ya Jumamosi kuniambia hivi kwamba sasa hivi nimefanya application kwenda mahakamani lakini taratibu ni kwamba lazima kesi itasikizwa siku ya Jumatatu taratibu ya kumzika mbunge baba na ule ambaye ni bwana wa marehemu ni kwamba siku ya Jumatatu ule mwili utaondolewa kwa helikopta ya serikali ya taifa la Kenya kutolewa katika Lee Funeral Home mwendo wa saa 12 asubuhi kuelekea kule Eldoret ili ule mwili uweze kulala kisha ukazikwa siku ya Jumane. Hivi kwamba taratibu hizi zimefanywa makusudi hivi kwamba 
mipango hiyo ya kumfukuza ilifanywa jana ili asiweze kupata nafasi ya kwenda mahakamani na kuweza kupata zile oda za kuzuia mazishi kutofanyika kwa hivyo tunajulisha serikali ya kwamba tutapinga hatua zozote za serikali kutumia ndege inayolipiwa fedha na wananchi wa Kenya ili kumbeba na kumzika yule ambaye anajaribu kum, wale ambao wanajaribu kukwepa ma, ma, kushirikishwa kwa mjane na watoto wa marehemu kwa hivyo tumepea ilani serikali na ilani tumeituma mpaka iweze kufika katika ikulu ya rais ya kwamba shida zilizomo katika familia lazima zitatuliwe kabla serikali kujiigiza katika mambo ya kumzika yule ambaye tunasema ni baba ya watoto na pia ni bwana wa marehemu. Kwa hivyo hayo ndiyo tulio yasema na tumeweza kutengeneza makaratasi yetu tutakuwa kutini siku ya Jumatatu licha kwamba mwili utakuwa unatolewa siku ya Jumatatu saa 12 kutoka mahafala ya Leaf Funeral Home. In summary what we are saying our clients came to us today Saturday at around 2 p.m. One, the husband to the, to the widow and a father to the children, one of the sons being here. After he passed, the siblings have been pretending that they have allowed them to participate fully in the funeral arrangement. Until yesterday, when they were chased out of the program, when they were told that they will not be allowed to step foot near the funeral procession, they will not participate in honoring and giving the last respects to one, the husband, two, to the father who has fallen. Out of their insistence yesterday, they were arrested. This has been a norm in that family. Every other time, they stand to enforce their rights as a wife or as right as their children. They have been arrested several in Eldoret. They have been arrested several in Nairobi and in other places and never have they been taken to court. A proper abuse of the police powers of the state to intimidate a widow, to intimidate a son who wants the right to participate in the burial of their father or the burial of their of her husband. Yesterday they were locked at Parkland Police Station. They were told and threatened that if they appear there, then they will be detained and until the burial is over. They have confided in us that the burial is slated for Tuesday and the body is supposed to be removed from Lee Funeral Home on Monday. At 6 a.m. in the morning, using a military chopper, a government chopper funded by the state to take the body to Eldoret, to lay in state, to be buried on Tuesday. Our clans are apprehensive that the state having involved itself, they will not be allowed to participate fully in the program on Tuesday. They might not be allowed even to step foot because the top police officers warned them that they keep off. At the center of this battle is properties where all the belongings, all the documents of ownership of property, all the title deeds, all the logbooks, all the vehicles, including her personal things, which we cannot express on a national television, have been taken from our home by the brothers of the deceased. This country is a country that is governed by the rule of law. We have very firm instructions to protect the orphans. It is immoral, it is unheard of to dispossess the orphans and also bar them from burying 
their dear father. Already, the orphan has told the public that out of the fights between the uncles, he has lost opportunities to, to do exam. He has never been paid for fees. His other brother is frustrated and completely depressed because his education, when he got a scholarship, a partial scholarship to go abroad, was frustrated by the siblings of the deceased. So we are urging the head of state, the president, and anybody who will want to participate in this matter to hold on until this dispute is resolved. Otherwise, we will make sure that we will storm into that funeral. If the court process will have taken late, we will undertake to, to take our clients, the orphan, to attend the funeral. We will see who will arrest them. We will take the widow by force to attend the burial of a dear husband. People are strangers are mourning more than the really bereaved family. So we are urging the citizens of the country to be together and support a widow who is being dispossessed. Mweshimiwa died after having made the law and we shall invoke the law that Mweshimiwa made. This was not the intention, the spirit of the late it is the spirit of none, the busy bodies who are now claiming to be the father, to be the uncle, to be the husband of the lady. If they want to inherit the widow, if that is what they intend to do, let them make their proposals and we put them on notice that we have instructions that that proposal will be rejected completely. They should respect the widow of the deceased I should keep off and allow the widow to mourn, allow the orphans to bury their father in dignity. And that is the instructions that we have, unless there is any other question. Now, I want to emphasize that my father, he really wanted his legacy to be honored. But his siblings are disrupting that legacy. I urge the people to protect his legacy. His last wish was for my brother and I to continue further with our studies. He constantly championed for education. So the siblings are battling the interest of our late father, and we ask that this may be halted. Thank you for listening to our voice. <laughs> yes. So those are the farm instructions that we have we have filed a matter today online, which will serve you. We have filed a matter online to stop the barrier. The timing is where the problem is, because the courts will sit to determine that matter on Monday, when already the body will have left Nairobi for barrier. Any more issue? Pleading. Zima, my camera says that to find you now.